It comes from some sort of mythological story in which a storm god plays the banjo in order to feed his children. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to words. Specifically, words I don't know the meaning of because I didn't grow up in America. And even more specifically, particular regions of America. Today, I'm going to tackle the Southwest. Not literally, it's not rugby. Now, as this series has developed, I've noticed people in the comments saying things like, I've lived in this region for over 400 years and I've never heard any of these words. Firstly, that's not my fault. And secondly, when we're talking about regional words, it doesn't mean that everybody within that region uses them all day, every day. They might only be used, let's say, by people in a particular professional field or a part of that region that you just don't happen to live in. But what these words usually have in common is that when they are used, they're used in theory with more frequency in the stated region than anywhere else in the United States. And for the Southwest in particular, I'm told that today's words come with a decidedly Spanish flavour. And this has always been of huge interest to me, because in Britain we don't really have a ton of Spanish influence on British English. In America, even here in the Midwest, you don't have to go too far before you see a Mexican restaurant or instructions that are in Spanish. So I'm going to be very interested to see how much of this list I actually know, especially as somebody who used to pronounce paella as paella British. Anyway, without further ado, let's guess the meaning of these words that are found predominantly in America's Southwest. Okay, first up is haboob, and haboob sounds like something that would get me demonetized if I say it wrong. It is a word I may have seen before, I think, but I don't know the meaning of it. It's not something that I use every day. It could be a verb, it could be a noun, don't know. I mean, that's probably true for most of these. I think a haboob is, it's when you've made a bit of a mistake. You've, you've made an error, as undoubtedly I have with this definition. So it turns out I'm entirely wrong. A haboob which is in fact an Arabic word, is a type of intense dust storm carried on an atmospheric gravity current. We, we don't get dust storms in Chicago. Arroyo. I talked about this one in a previous video, I think, a while back, and it was some sort of natural phenomena, but I can't remember exactly what that phenomena was. An arroyo is, is something to do with the aridness, is that a word, of the Southwest. But what is it? I can't remember. I wish Lawrence from a year ago, or whenever I did that video, was right here right now, because he'd be able to tell me. You know, there'd also be paradoxical issues with that, so I don't want to get into it. But I think an arroyo is some sort sort of ravine. This is terrible. Let's let's listen to Lawrence from a year or so ago. Well, there's one other type of phenomenon that while not exclusive to the United States, it's only found in arid regions of the world that are similar to America's Southwest. I'm talking about Arroyo. An Arroyo is a kind of temporary dry creek or gulch, and they often come about after a series of flash floods. And as you've probably guessed, it's taken from the Spanish word Arroyo. In Spanish, Arroyo just means any small river. And it's quite comfortable to hear that because if an arroyo magically showed up in the United Kingdom, I think we just call it a stream or an English puddle. And for the Southwest in particular, I'm told that today's words come with a decidedly Spanish flavour. This is hardly surprising, of course, given that the Southwest, which for the purposes of this video comprises Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, Utah, Nevada, and California, is heavily influenced by Spanish or Mexican culture and boasts the highest concentration of Spanish ancestry in the United States. Adobe, I mean, that provides Photoshop and Premiere Pro. But Adobe, in this sense, isn't it some sort of um, mudding for making housing? It's like mud houses, isn't it? Adobe, is that even how you pronounce it? That's how I pronounce the company name. Adobe is a building material made from the earth and organic materials. Adobe is Spanish for mud brick. And in some English-speaking regions of Spanish heritage, such as the Southwest and United States, the term is used to refer to any kind of earth and construction. I know the term snowbird because it's often used to describe people who move from sort of colder climates in the US or even Canada, right? Down to the south. It's often associated with Florida. I don't know much about it. It's usually associated with senior citizens, I think, but that definition has begun to change over time. Yes, I got one right. It is admittedly one that isn't from Spanish. 
Corrido. I, it sounds to me like a type of food, and I imagine that somewhere along the way there's going to be food items on this list. Corrido sounds like it is, but I don't know what. Uh, probably something to do with jalapenos. Corrido is a style of burrito that has inside it all, all, all of everything. It's like an everything bagel, just in burrito form. You should never eat that because it sounds like it would be terrible for you. Corrido is not a type of food. It is in fact a popular narrative, metrical tale and poetry that forms a ballad. The songs are often about oppression, history, daily life for criminals, the vaquero lifestyle and other socially relevant topics. Not only were they widely popular during the Mexican revolutions of the 20th century, but also in the Southwestern American frontier as it was a part of the development development of the New Mexico music style, where it later influenced Western music. Oh my, how do I say this one? Chil Chiltepin? Chiltepin. Chiltepin. Chiltepin, we'll go with that. Chiltepin is a word I don't think I've seen before, and I certainly don't know the meaning of it off the top of my head. I'm trying to think of it being used in a sentence. Is it a verb or is it a noun? Or does it even matter at this point? Chiltepin is it's it's an activity you do it with your feet i'm thinking of tapping which is english for tapping your feet so this makes no sense but it's all i've got right now all right it's all i've got so i am chilling and tapping my feet chill tapping lawrence you're an idiot what does that what what does this word mean it is a type of capsicum that is native to southern north america and northern south america apparently chill tapping was named the official native pepper of texas in 1997 Pozole, is, am I saying that right? This one does sound like a food, and if it isn't, I'm Pamela Anderson. Maybe this is like a seafood dish that has hot, spicy things in it, and peppers, and a lot of other things, and that's what they call it, pozole. I suppose just put me out of my misery, what is a pozole? Well, it is a food item, so I think I deserve at least half a point for that. And it is a traditional soup or stew from Mexican cuisine. Do they put seafood in it? Then I get three quarters of a point. No, they don't. Typically, it will have pork or chicken and can be seasoned and garnished with shredded lettuce or cabbage. No need. Chili peppers, onion, garlic, radishes, avocado, salsa and limes. So I'm getting here that it's Mexican, but is it served in any particular areas of the southwestern US? Do we know? Let me know if you've had this soup and whether you live in one of the southwestern states. Ah, butte! Now, this definitely isn't a food item, unless you're Richard Dreyfus, because the word butte has come up in a previous video or two, and it's a geological formation that does that, and then it sort of does that, it goes kind of flat at the top, and then does that down the sides. So, since I'm thinking of Close Encounter of the Third Kind, an example would be Devil's Tower. Yep, in geomorphology, a butte is an isolated hill with steep, often vertical sides, and a small, relatively flat top. Mesa is, I thought they were similar to buttes, if not the same thing. If they're not the same thing as buttes, how do they differ from them? This is not a conversation I ever thought I'd have with anyone, much less thousands of people. So thanks for bearing with me on this. A mesa, as opposed to a butte, is a butte, but bigger. A mesa is an isolated flat-topped elevation, ridge or hill, which is bounded from all sides by steep escarpments and stands distinctly above a surrounding plain. It it still sounds like a butte. Buttes versus mesas. This is the debate we're having today. What is the difference? Here we go. Buttes are smaller landforms than mesas. I think I win. Hatch chili. This is where I use my ridiculous English intuition and just assume this is a bowl of chili that has egg in it because eggs hatch. This sounds awful. So don't ever make that dish. Or it could have chicken in it. Because when eggs hatch, you get a baby chicken. This is sounding even worse. I'm just, I'm digging my own grave. But I honestly don't have any guesses outside of that because I'm an idiot. Oh, I was thinking of chili wrong. It's a chili pepper. And it's a chili pepper from the US state of New Mexico. And Hatch Chili is a label for New Mexico chili grown in the Hatch Valley in and around Hatch, New Mexico. Norteño. It, this rings a bell, but I can't really say why. But I am interested by the first four letters there, because that could denote some kind of etymology to do with the North. 
That's just something you often see with words that begin N-O-R. Uh, Nordic is a good example. My linguistic brain is telling me that that's where it comes from. Maybe it's a Mexican or Southwestern way of referring to the Northern United States. I, that can't be right. Norteño is indeed the Spanish word for Northern. I, you've got to give me half a point there. And I, I do mean only half a point because as it pertains to its use in the Southwest United States, Norteño is a genre of regional Mexican music. It was developed in the late 19th century as a mixture between local Mexican music and Austrian Czech origin folk music. This sounds amazing. Menudo. Well, let's let's take stock of what we've had so far. We've had food, we've had rock formations, storms, and we've also had performance-based things. So maybe Menudo is something that sort of mixes all of those. It comes from some sort of mythological story in which a storm god plays the banjo in order to feed his children. That is definitely not correct, is it? That's what is... So Menudo is... It is a traditional Mexican soup and apparently an annual Menudo festival is held in Santa Maria, California, and since 1996, the Menudo Bowl is an annual event in Laredo, Texas. It's made with cow's stomach in broth with a red chili pepper base, and usually includes hominy, lime, onions, and oregano slash oregano. And the last is hoodoo. 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 I think I am. I don't know what hoodoo would be in this context. I mean, obviously it rhymes with voodoo but I don't know if it's got any connection to that. If it does, it would suggest magic of some kind. But once again, you know, I've been tripped up by a lot of these words. So whatever I think it is, it's not going to be. Therefore, I don't think that it's a food item with meat in it and, you know, chili peppers and some sort of tortilla. I don't think that. I absolutely don't think that because that's reverse psychology. If I don't think it, it will be. It's not. It's a tall, thin spire of rock that protrudes from the bottom of an arid drainage basin or badland. I didn't know there was a word for that until today. We don't have many hoodoos in Chicago, although I suppose you could make the case for the Sears Tower, but I've always wanted to see some up close. That's it for this embarrassing episode. Let me know in the comments below if you live in the Southwest and if you've heard of any of these words. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. As ever, a haboob-sized shout out to my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lostinthepond. Until the next video, goodbye.